Now this morning, Judge Newman said he would not allow the prosecution to admit evidence of that roadside shooting, saying, quote, it's a bridge too far. By the end of the day, though, that decision changed after the defense left the door wide open for the prosecution. Our legal analyst, Mark Pepper, joining us tonight to break down what we heard in court today, Mark. Is it unusual for a judge to go back on a ruling like that? Did the defense open that door after seemingly trying so hard to keep it shut? Yeah, good evening, Raf. Good to be with you. A very unusual day, a very unusual ruling. But then again, it's the double murder trial of Alec Murdoch. So we should uh, not be surprised that you get one ruling in the morning and, and a different one in the afternoon, right? Let's talk about it very quickly. This morning's ruling was under 404B. It's a bridge too far, as you've just explained and, and Blair eloquently stated. Trying to get the financial stuff in for motive, we'll let you do that. But when you talk about a roadside shooting that's unrelated to motive, it's three months after, right? It might go to a common scheme or plan, but that's subject to Rule 403. And whatever probative value it had, the judge said, was far too prejudicial at this time. Those being the three key words from this morning. So what does that force the state to do? The state has to make a decision. Do we call Eddie Smith up knowing that as it stands now, he can't testify? And do we subject him to cross-examination? They say no. And then it forces them to call what I suspect was going to be their last and final witness, lead detective David Owen, uh, to get that video in. So this morning's ruling was key to today. Yet the door gets opened by the defense and Judge Newman busts through the door at the end of the afternoon in stating, as your story reported, you asked him about the roadside shooting. You asked him about drug money. You asked him exactly what the state is going to be calling Eddie Smith to testify to, presumably tomorrow. Therefore, I reverse my ruling. I will allow testimony to come in. That's huge. We talked about last night. That's a huge ruling because now we're going to have the jury hear what may amount to them as being some type of evidence of guilt and that he tried to have himself killed. See how that plays out tomorrow. And do you think it aids the defense at all? Or why else would they have brought it up? So this is what I call baiting 101, right? You file motions for a reason. Sometimes you want to win them. Sometimes you don't. Yesterday was all about preventing Eddie Smith from testifying, right? Or so they wanted it to seem. Yet they get the ruling they asked for, and then they go and open the door. Here's why I think that was a smart play. Had the state not called Eddie Smith to the stand today, and if they don't call him tomorrow, or if they were forced to not call him tomorrow, the defense could always call him. But there's a difference. The defendant gets to cross-examine the state witness. In other words, ask leading questions. Isn't it correct, Cousin Eddie, that isn't it true that, okay? If the defendant had to call him in his, in his defense, in his chief case next week, you're not allowed to lead the witness. And as we heard directly from Dick Harputlin yesterday, he's looking forward to that cross-examination. I think today and yesterday was all about baiting the state into not calling him, going ahead and putting their, their lead agent up now, walking through the door and now forcing them back to the stand tomorrow. Cousin Eddie is going to be subject to cross-examination tomorrow, which is exactly what the defendant wanted. So do you feel like the state waited to call up David Owen because it'd be a good point of recapping testimony that we've already heard? Yeah, I, and it's a great witness to, to connect the dots, to use their language, right? I mean, they're trying to connect the financial crimes as motive to what happened on June 7, to the June uh, 11th interview, all the way up to the August 11th interview. I thought it was a very uh, well done examination, if nothing else. Remember, Alec may not testify. We don't know, okay? But the jury got to hear him testify today in what was 35, 45 minute video uh, two months afterwards. So really well done by the state, but an even better job by the defendants. I mean, that was cross-examination 101. Remember, their theme all along has been family man and sloppy investigation. And what, is, uh, what, do, what do they do on, on cross-examination today with Agent Owen is they point out all the missteps made to include at least a mistake in his testimony to the state grand jury. I thought that was a very, very good cross-examination. Overall, a really good day for the defense. All right, Mark Pepper, thank you very much. Live Five's legal analyst. We always appreciate you taking the time to break these things down for us.